everyone. Thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subject, comic books. My name is Jose. I love comic books. I love talking about them. I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like. Links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the DC fan site that'll have plot synopsis and character bios for the story. So we are continuing our run through the Chris Claremont era of X-Men which will include New Mutants. It will include X-Factor, which I know is mostly written by Louise Simonson, but it's a very important um, to to the Chris Claremont era type thing. And um, Excalibur. We're going to do all this in reading order. Wolverine, everything. So as as we get to things i have a playlist as well so uncanny x-men 153 from 1981 i'm not a big fan of this story but that's okay and i'm doing it here because well it's part of it but i think chris claremont's really missing john Byrne. so this this whole story is basically a good night story and here on the cover and now for something completely different so cover by Dave Cockham and Joseph Rubenstein so it's actually not a bad cover just not a big fan of the inside this is the um, <clears throat> this is the issue that I had. Um, I actually do own this issue. Mike Mignola is the new cover artist for classic X-Men. So. So, we got our credits here with Claremont as the writer. Cockrum and Rubenstein doing the art. Tom Marzakowski returns to do the letter. Louise Simonson, uh, using her maiden name, Jones, she hasn't married Walt yet, is still editing, and Jim Shooter is the editor-in-chief. So, they're cleaning up the mansion from all the damage that was done during their battle with the Hellfire Club. I have covered that, and I, like I said, I have a playlist here. We got Colossus kind of picking up the heavy stuff. We got Cyclops here, got Wolverine over here. And Cyclops says, uh, or sorry, Colossus says, where do you want this pile of wreckage placed, Cyclops? And Cyclops says, down by the boathouse. We'll see, sorry, we'll sort through it and try to determine what's salvageable. When the mess, when this mess is completely cleared out, sorry. Um, and Wolverine says, hurry back, Petey, there's a... Whole heck of a lot more where that came from. Even by my standards, this was a scrap to remember. So. And so here he goes. Um, the cleanup goes slowly, Professor, but I believe we will be finished by tomorrow. And uh, Professor X says, excellent, Colossus. And so here we have Carol Danvers, who... Um, Former X-Men, oh, I'm sorry, former Avenger, and she lost her power. That was Avengers Annual 10, which I have covered, and it is actually on the X-Men playlist. So, uh, that was the first appearance of Rogue. So, and uh, Storm says, ouch, sorry, I didn't mean to flinch. My whole head is sore. Where was I? Oh, yes, the White Queen Switch Persona is with me, so that's... So that when her consciousness was in my body and mine in hers, then the X-Men battled the Hellfire Club. I had no choice but to fight her as I would any villain. Sounds grim, says Carol. So again, we're getting a recap for the reader. And so... Storm continues here. It was. The Hellfire Club was routed, but my body paid the price. I ache, while the White Queen escaped virtually unscathed. Somehow it doesn't seem quite fair. Then Nightcrawler teleports and says, Professor, I finished my inspection tour. I thought I'd teleport and give you 
the news in person rather than uh, over the intercom or by having you read my mind. Things are as bad as we feared, says Nightcrawler. The danger room, the prime computer, and one wing of the house are a total loss. The hangar complex and our Blackbird aircraft suffered minimal damage. Professor, we cannot affect uh, repairs by ourselves. We lack the tools, the raw materials, the expertise. What do we do? asks Nightcrawler. And Professor Xavier says, the best we can, Nightcrawler. With that, we have. Oh, sorry, with what we have. And so he says that part aloud, and then this is the thought balloon. He's quite right, though. Our physical and financial resources have been straight to the breaking point, and at this moment, I see no viable solution, he says. I love the little bit of screen tones that are here. And so here comes uh, Kitty Pride. And I don't think she has the code name Sprite, but it doesn't stick for as long. I think Claremont realized what a mistake it was. So she comes out through the roof and says, Peter. And Nightcrawler says, good evening, uh, Katskin. I think it is. Uh, Kitty, basically. I've not seen you all day. Where have you been keeping yourself? I've been working, Kurt, hard, just like you guys. Peter, it's Ileana's bedtime. Are you going to tuck her in, in or am I? I shall be up directly, Katya, as soon as I've washed and changed the clothes. Okay, don't be long. So, it looks like Ileana, she hasn't, uh, We she's still at a uh, normal, as, as a little girl, that's his little sister here. So, uh, Peter is there and he, he says, What troubles you, little snowflake? Of course, that is translated in Russian. I'm frightened, Pyotr, that uh, the bad things that happen will will they happen again will bad people come to hurt you and me and um kitty says don't be scared liana we'll protect you peter why don't you tell her a story that always made me feel better when i was a kid and peter says and how many months ago was that never you mind you ain't so old yourself buster uh could uh, could katya tell it please i like her stories best says Ileana. And so it looks like they're, she's speaking Russian, too. After a request like that, how can I refuse? I'm glad the professor telepathically taught us all Russian. Oh, there we go. Um, I haven't read this in forever, so you'll have to excuse me. Um, man, I, I haven't looked at this issue since probably 91 when I bought that, uh, that classic X-Men. So let's see. Oh, yeah. Hold on to your hats, people, because this one's going to be a beaut. I think I'll call it Kitty's Fairy Tale. So, all right. I am just sort of going to... Uh, I'm not a big fan of this. So, um, I find this to be a throwaway story. It really doesn't do anything but fill, fill stuff. I think this is just stuff that... Dave Cockrum wanted to draw, and so I don't know. So you can see they're in like a strange land. Um, you see here, uh, Colossus and Kitty. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but anyway, um, I'm just gonna let you look at the pictures. I'm really it just it doesn't really do much uh like i mentioned it's it's sort of a throwaway story um so again it's it's her uh so here's professor xavier here's the dark phoenix As I mentioned, um, normally, if, if this is your first video of me that you are listening to, I don't suggest. Those of you who are just completists who just want to look at the story or at the, you know, just kind of see it, feel free. Um, like I said, I'm going nice and slow. So if you want to read it, you certainly can. Um, but it just, 
it, it doesn't really move the story. The first part, you know, but like I said, the second part just doesn't really do much. Um, this part here. So it's just Kitty telling a story. So and so here we get to the 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 part here where so now this part was a story so now here um Wolverine's walking by and Nightcrawler's overhearing and Wolverine's like what's up Elf? Quiet Wolverine, don't let Kitty hear you. He says, "Why?" Whisper, blast it. She's telling Eliana a bedtime story and it's magnificent. Listen and judge for yourself. It better be good, Fuzzy, cuz I feel pretty silly standing here and I don't like to feel silly. By the way, these are whisperings um when you see these um back in the day that's how they they made whispers so and again some screen tone here so all right back to that um story here so so and look at little Nightcrawler. So, and here we are back to the real world. He says, "Ah, I don't know whether to die of embarrassment or strangle Kitty." And Wolverine's like, "Grin and bear above." I think she pegged you just right. And then here comes, of course, Storm and Carol Danvers. Says, "Roro Campbell, uh, take a pew and listen up. Kitty's spinning the sweetest yarn since Casablanca." So. Um, it looks like all the X-Men are going to be listening in and, um, Dave Cockrum is a good cartoonist. This is very cartoony and he does a very good job. So, I'm just, uh, not, uh, like I said, it, it doesn't, it doesn't do much for the story. So that's kind of why I'm just glossing over it. But for the sake of completion, we're just going to do this. So, and look at Wolverine here. <laughs> I'm mean. So, that looks awesome. And uh, look at this. Chomp, <laughs> chomp. And uh, Nightcrawl now laughs and says, Ha, Kitty may have pegged me, my friend, but she skewered you. What's the matter, Elf? Jealous? And we can see Storm just laughing here. Professor Scotty, join the party. And uh, we wouldn't miss it for the world, Carol. It's been too long since these halls have heard the sound of laughter. So back to the um, to the tale here. As I mentioned, um, where <laughs> look at this. He's very good at this cartooniness. I'm surprised he didn't do more of this. So. And so here's the the phoenix. Strange seeing somebody other than John Byrne draw her at this point. Look at that. Very cartoony, very entertaining uh, his art. And so As I mentioned before, I have a playlist with the X-Men from um, uh, Giant Size X-Men number one, which I covered as classic X-Men number one. And I went through classic X-Men. Um, so once once the backup stories ended in classic X-Men, um, that's when I moved. Um, I have most of these older issues in classic X-Men form. That's how I, like I said, that's how I um, ended up with them. But I've, throughout, I've managed to go back and get quite a bit of them. I have every issue of X-Men from 160 all the way through Chris Claremont's end in, its, in the original in, in, uh, form. So since an adult, I've gone back uh, and filled in a lot of the gaps. I didn't start reading X-Men till 
the um, Mutant Massacre, which is like around issue 210. So I've actually gone back um, when I was in high school and as I would get little extra money, I went and I think I went all the way to 190. So when I was in college and all that, but since then, you know, I've recently uh, started to really complete this X-Men run. So I'm trying to go, so I'm trying to go all the way from the Dark Phoenix Saga. I'm missing two issues of the Dark Phoenix Saga. Otherwise, I have all of them. I have um, all, basically, I have all of John Byrne's end um, from the Dark Phoenix Saga. I have everything before that in Classic X-Men. And then um, um, I, I'm trying to fill some of these Cockrum ones. And I have maybe about half of them. So kind of working on it. Anyway, Ileana fell asleep and P uh, Peter asked, is she asleep? Yeah, my story must have really wowed her. Come on, let's tiptoe out of here. And so they walk out and uh, everybody was listening and she goes, what'd you think of it? Truth? Uh, Kat said, sure, Nightcrawler. Oh, no, sorry. She goes, Nightcrawler, oh no. Um, Sorry. This doesn't make, um, like, are you supposed to read this part or this part? So, anyway, everybody. And she says, yes. Well, to be honest, Katie, we thought it was it was great, especially the ending. Thank you. And so the uh, Cyclops gives her a kiss in the forehead. And thus, we end this tale. So, starting next issue again, I'll go back to doing things the way I normally do them. But for this one, like I said, I skipped a lot just because, as I mentioned, it's a bit of a throwaway story. So uh, next issue, Reunion with the Star Jammers. So, all right, X-Men, sorry, Uncanny X-Men, 153, Chris Claremont, uh, Dave Cockrum, and uh, Joseph Rubenstein. Like and subscribe, and it's okay if you don't like it because I understand. I, I probably didn't do as well a job as I, as I have done in other ones. Just didn't interest me so I, I apologize that's my fault but uh anyway we'll be back to full swing on the next one goodbye